This is a quick review of Special Forces Team X, a game with the most generic title imaginable. Came out on Xbox Live Arcade on February 6th for 1,200 Microsoft points and it's by Zombie Studio. If that name sounds familiar, they're the same guys who did Blacklight Retribution. It's described on Xbox.com as a cover-based third-person shooter, and as you can see here, you can certainly play it that way. It's much like Gears of War or Ghost Recon in that you press a button, you snap to cover, and you can blind fire or shoot from cover, and that's certainly one way that you can play the game. However, the more you play it, the more you realise you don't actually need cover to play it effectively, as it makes more sense just to run about freely and shoot people, only occasionally using cover to shield yourself from fire. So really, the way most players play it is kind of a mix of the two. They are occasionally in cover, but most of the time it's like this, where people are just running around shooting freely at each other. Or you can just run up to them and punch them to death, because why not? You're punching them to death. You'll also notice when you play that there are special weapons you can grab during the match. These include airstrikes and chainsaws, as seen here. They're not particularly effective, but they do help mix up the actual maps themselves and make a change from players just running around emptying machine guns into each other. Customization's a big thing. The more you play, the more experience points you get, the more you level up, the more things you unlock. You can change the weapons your character has, or you can change the look of them, which is weirdly named Bruce or John or other names for reasons I don't quite understand. But you'll spend a lot of time just messing around with your character trying to find the right setup that they have, and they also have perks that you can use as well. One of the cool things that does set this apart from other third person games is that the maps are randomly generated. Before each game you choose the tile set that the maps use to, I guess, create themselves. And Zombie Studios say that there are over 100 maps in total, so it's kind of cool that when you jump into a game that you don't immediately know the map layout and you do have to spend a few minutes learning the ins and outs of each new map. The netcode for the most part is pretty good, we've heard about a glitch that resets people's levels but we didn't experience that ourselves. One concern is whether there'll be enough players to keep playing this in the weeks and months to come. Even when we were playing, which was about a week after launch, there weren't an awful lot of players about, which is a shame because as I say there are no real problems with the netcode and the game itself is quite good fun. The main thing is Special Forces Team X is just a really good fun game to play. There are a lot of game modes, the netcode runs fine, it's an easy game to play and to understand. It's just really good fun all round and the customization really helps as you start to feel a connection with the character as you unlock more parts and start building your identity in the world. But the main problem with this game is that I don't think the online community will be around to sustain it for long enough. It is good fun, but without players really getting stuck into it and without the community sustaining it, and no single player mode, you're really relying on there being enough players to fill matches and for them to all have varying levels so you see different levels of customization and weapons and tactics and so on. It's a shame because it is really good fun, did really enjoy playing it, but the real test for this game is in the weeks and months ahead.